All right, let's see how you did on performing a matched pairs t-test and t-interval on your own. So we had this company who wanted to implement an exercise program for its workers to see if it will improve job satisfaction. So they were measured with a questionnaire. If they had randomly selected 10 workers and they scored their job satisfaction before and after the implementation of the exercise program. So, you know, so keep in mind, this is one subject here. We have subject number one. And so you can see that the job satisfaction before we even began was quite different amongst the workers. You know, this person, these two people down here were not very happy as opposed to this person right here who had a score of 45 who was happy, quite happy. So that's another reason to understand that the where you started and where you finished are not the key. The key is how much did the ch how much change occurred between those two situations. See, this person's um, happiness or job satisfaction actually went down. But these two people's job satisfaction went up. So regardless, you know, even though they can, they ended still lower than this person here. So we're interested in how much change does the treatment create? All right. So that highlighted group is the one we're interested in. And FYI, you can go and put this data into your calculator. You go and put this into L1 for the before. Go and put L2 in here. Then in your calculator, you're going to go and you're going to go to the L3. So you're going to be able to see this here. And let me go ahead and clear that list L3. So you take your cursor and you go place it on top of L3 and then give it instructions. So I like to do the after minus before. So I'm going to go second number two, and that gives me L2, minus second L1, and then I hit enter. And so what it just did was it did L2 minus L1. So look at subject one. After the program, the job satisfaction went down one. Subject number two, after the program, the um, job satisfaction went up eight. So then when you do the after minus before, these make sense as to the direction that changed after the treatment. So this person's in, uh, satisfaction went way up. This person's satisfaction went down and so on. Okay. So there's how you do that. Now, let's go do our phantoms because we're going to run a test and lots of lots of stuff here um, kind of had trouble squinching it all in. It's kind of a, a busy page here. Okay. So our parameter <clears throat> is this one mean. This one mean with the after minus before. So the average difference, average difference, important that those two words are right there. In job satisfaction after the exercise break has been instituted. And in hindsight, it might have been smart for me to go ahead and put in here after minus before. Okay. Um, I actually did put the after minus before down here when I did my little um, dot plot. So I did indicate that up there as well. Okay. Now here comes our null hypothesis is that that job satisfaction remained the same. So the average difference was zero. And the alternative is the average difference is greater than zero because they are testing to see if there was improvement in the job satisfaction. So they wondered if on average it went up. So that's greater than zero. Okay. Assumptions for one group, only L3. 
and only that one set of subjects. So we were stated to have 10 randomly selected workers. We assumed that these 10 workers are less than all 10% of all this company's workers. And look here, assume that each worker's job satisfaction is independent of the other's job satisfaction. So they might, um, Make sure, you know, we don't have people that are going and working out together or whatever it is, or people that are maybe in different departments throughout the company, whatever it is. But we're assuming that they kind of covered that so that one person's not pulling everybody down or saying, I don't like this or whatever. Okay. Large enough, they were not. So I had to do a dot plot. Notice that here is where the zero is because there were some negative numbers and then the others were positive. So this is the job satisfaction after minus before. That's pretty good looking data. So this somewhat symmetric, unimodal, no outliers. So the approximately normal model applies. All right. Um, name of this was a matched pairs sample T test four means. Okay, so here's how I put this into my calculator. So I went and I just did T test. So in my calculator, again, stat over to test number two, T test, because I'm doing it, I'm, I'm going to uh, do my inference on that one list, L3. So number two. So I am getting my information from the data in list three. And my null hypothesis is that the difference was zero. Okay. And again, my alternative was seeing if the satisfaction has increased above zero. And so then we calculate and we get, this is our T score. This is our P value. Notice that degrees of freedom is not listed on here. So holy moly, what is the degrees of freedom for that? Well, it's just one list, one set. How do we do degrees of freedom? N minus one. So for 10 subjects, the degrees of freedom is nine, okay? All right, so we obtained our p-value, which is less than alpha of 0.01. Why did I put 0.01 there? Did they say at the 1% level of significance? <laughs> they didn't say that. I don't, that might have been a typo. I don't know why I put 0.01 there, but anyway. Uh, so we reject the null hypothesis. So let's look at the conclusion. So we start off since I reject p value, since p value is lower than alpha, I reject HO. Okay, now what is our evidence about the average? difference in job satisfaction after the implementation of the work exercise program. There is evidence that the average change in job satisfaction improved after the implementation of the exercise program. Okay. All right. Make a 96% confidence interval to estimate how much change that was on average. Uh, so parameters and substance same, match pairs T interval for means. So we then go put that into our calculator. And I'm going to stat over to test. And I'm going to do a T interval, number eight. My information is data in list three. And I said to do a 96% confidence interval. So I'm going to calculate or calculate, we'll calculate. So here is this. And so look here, look at this. Don't forget this description of the way that this uh, uh, interval was made. The average of the after minus before, 2.83 to 14.17. And what are the units of those, by the way? Those were the points in the of job satisfaction. Okay, so I am 96% confident that the average change or average difference in job satisfaction is between 2.83 and 14.17 
points higher after the implementation of the exercise program. And since zero is not in the interval, this suggests that there is evidence of an improvement in job satisfaction after the implementation of the exercise program. All right, there it is for you. All the differences, that lays it out. That's the end, really, of, our, of all the means inference. We did one mean, two independent means, and now this matched pairs means. Next is going to come in when we put all the means and proportions together and start identifying uh, the different ones that we have to, the different tests in, for inference uh, when they're all together. All right. So good luck to you on your assignment. And I hope that that makes sense for you.